I had Chris Martinson on with me earlier this week on television, and we talked about it a little bit on radio. And I want I want you to hear from him. He's a um, he has his PhD, and his he's he wrote a book called Prosper. He's the co-founder of Prosperity.com on how to prepare for the future and create a world worth inheriting. And I wanted to get him on to talk specifically about the banks, because I've talked about it for a while, but I don't think people understand what's happening with our currency and what's coming our way. Welcome to the program, Chris. How are you? I'm very well. It's good to be back with you, Glenn. Um, Chris, I want to I pick up our conversation that we were having the other day um, on television about currency and the banks. Um, because I had made a statement that, you know, is it time to start thinking about getting your money out of the banks? Because with what the Treasury is doing, with, you know, eliminating the $100 bill or wanting to, with them tracking your money, with the threat of a haircut overseas, there's, there's trapping you. And you took it to a really spooky place and said, no, a lot of this is already happening. Can you go into that? Well, sure. I, I mean, I'm... I'd, I'd like to say I'd be glad to, but I'm not glad to, to have this conversation. Really spooky things have been happening, and a lot of it's been happening behind the scene. The U.S. press has been, uh, I guess, regularly silent and quiet on the matter. Yeah. But there have been a number of really important developments that most people don't know about. And it, it really begins with the bail-in that happened in Cyprus in 2013. It was a test run to find out what happens uh, can you take money from depositors in a bank? And the answer is yes. And then by 2014, this had gotten kind of enshrined in law. And now most people are unaware of, of the laws that exist out there. But, you know, bail-in is a statutory power of a resolution authority. That's the language they use. They don't call these things bankruptcies anymore. They call them resolution proceedings. And here's the punchline. In a bankruptcy of a major bank now, one considered to be too big to fail, the banks are going to be promptly recapitalized with unsecured debts. Well, that sounds fine. I'm not, I don't own any unsecured debt. But yes, you do if you have a bank account with the bank. Most people don't realize this. The money you have on deposit in a bank is considered an unsecured loan to the bank. And by it being unsecured, there's a whole host of people who are in front of you in line to get money out of that bank when it fails. Okay, you so deposit hey. your last. Hang on now. Let, let's let's dumb this down just a little bit because this may be moving too fast for people who are you know not prepared for this conversation yet. What a haircut is that happened over in Cyprus is the government was running out of money, the banks were running out of money, and so they decided to give what they called a financial haircut to everybody across the board in the bank in their bank account. So if you know you had you know money in the bank account, they took. Was it 14 percent? I don't remember the percentage, but they just took a that was actually Donald Trump's suggestion of 14 percent. They just took a percentage off the top of everybody's bank account. And then they said, oh, this will never happen again. People were really spooked by it and, and asking, how can the government just come in or how can the bank just come in and take my life savings? They promised it would never happen again. But now it's happening in Austria, the same exact thing. Now, what I didn't know is that the American banks have changed the language of all of their deals. We know those big, long, you know, you put your, you open up a bank account, they make you sign all that stuff and all the fine print, and you just sign it, and you're just like, ah, I'm sure it's all fine. This is what Chris just said, and explain what that language means again to you about our unsecured loans. It means very simply that when you have money in a bank account, you are a, an unsecured creditor of the bank. So, so the bank has an IOU. That's your bank account. You think you put money in a bank, you have money. You don't. What you have is a, a promise ticket back from the bank that says, oh, you've lent me money. It, they don't call it that, but that's legally how it's counted. And when you loan money to an entity and they get in trouble and they go into bankruptcy, there are laws around how you'll get paid back, if you'll get paid back, whether you'll get cents on the dollar, or how all of that will resolve. And who's and, in the front of the line, who's in the back of the line? Yep, a bunch of very complicated rules, and most people don't know this. This was, uh, there's something called the Citibank Amendment, colloquially, that's what, you know, you just, it's not its actual name, but Citi uh, had lobbyists, they worked hard to rewrite a specific law that got passed in an omnibus spending bill back, uh, a couple years back, and what this law did was it said that the derivative bets of banks 
are senior secured claims over almost every other claim to that bank, including... Explain, stop, stop. Explain what a senior derivative... What, what, did, what did you say? Explain what that is. A senior... So these are the people at the front of the line. Senior means you're above, uh, you're in front of the line. So a senior secured claim means that if the bank gets in trouble and, oh, my gosh, you know, we have to figure out who's going to take the losses, the derivative bets that bank has made are almost at the very front of the line. And they what get paid off first. And what are derivative bets? Ooh, well, these derivatives are things, fancy names like credit default swaps, credit default obligations. Risky these bets. are the things all the that thing, all the trouble. Th yeah. All in the things that caused the problem in 2008, and it is much worse now. The banks have a much bigger problem with them this time than they did in 2008, correct? Absolutely. So consider that J.P. Morgan, for instance, has about a trillion dollars of deposits on its books. And it has derivatives of about $68 trillion on its book. Oh, my God. Okay, so when the bank, because they know, most likely, the uh, governments cannot politically uh, get away with a bailout, and so they, they wrote this new law with lobbyists to pass it, so all of the banks now, instead of asking for a bailout, will get a bail-in automatically, because that little fine print says if they start to go under, they can take all of your money, all of your cash, and they don't have to pay you back. You lose it. And they can pay for these big bets of CDOs. That's exactly right. And remember, these big bets are bets they made with other big banks, typically. And they're zero-sum games. So if I made a bet with you and you win, I lose. It's just, you know, you sum it up, it comes to zero. But those derivative bets are there. They're enormous. They're very large. There's rumblings that maybe Deutsche Bank got in a lot of trouble with their derivatives. They swapped a whole, they sold a whole bunch of them over to, guess who, uh, Citi and J.P. Morgan earlier this year, uh, you know, well in excess of a, uh, a several trillion dollars worth of do these all, things. Do all banks have this rule in their bylaws now? Glenn, very important question. So this is a, a statutory law comes from the federal government about how bail-ins happen, but not wow. all banks are carrying derivatives and other risky bets on their books. So how do you know which banks are carrying derivatives? Well, the, the handy list I use when I'm telling people about which banks they might want to consider leaving money in or not, you go to the Office of Comptroller of Currency. It's the Division of Treasury. They print a list, and they'll show you the top 25 banks with uh, the derivative exposure, I tend to avoid those banks. Tell me how to get there right now. Stu, you follow this. Tell me how to get there. Where do you go? I go to um, the OCC website, which is OCC.gov. OCC. And if you're in Google, you would say OCC quarterly derivative. If you type something like that in there, you would find the listing. And these are the top banks that have derivatives. Right, so I just found and it. these are the ones that you got to stay away from. If a bank isn't dealing in derivatives, then, you know, they might get hit, but they're not going to be hit like everybody else. That's correct. So now, if, the, bank, the banks are planning on taking all of our savings and paying off for their risky bets, knowing that the bailout actually does happen without a lawmaker having to pass anything because of FDIC. Well, it, remember the FDIC has about, oh, I guess last I checked it was about $25 billion, uh, on hand, and it's insuring several, tri well, what, 8 or $9 trillion worth of, of uh, deposits. So if there's a big banking accident, I, I think the FDIC works great if you have a small bank failure, sure. or a couple of contained sure, sure. ones, but if there's a big one, right, if you have a big derivative accident, uh, the FDIC will be swamped, and then we'll have a big political fight over how it gets recapitalized. But in the meantime... Your money in a bank that got caught upside down in this derivative mess, uh, that money will be frozen, and there'll be this whole very ugly political and legal process to figure out who takes what sorts of losses. But in the meantime, right. you won't have access to that money. All right, so Chris, let me go here. and we, I only have two minutes. Maybe we have you on again next week. Could we do that? Sure. Um, because I think this is, a, this is an important topic that you know I know people are going to have questions on. So the first thing you have to do, and let's leave it at this, the first thing you have to do is find out if your bank is deeply in derivatives. Is it better to be in a local, a very small local bank? Absolutely. Uh, I use a cooperative bank. I use a savings bank. And 
I also use a credit union. I have three different ones. I personally use all of them ranked very highly on places like bankrate.com or Weiss Ratings, places like that. Okay. I'd like to have you back maybe next week, and if somebody will make a note, I'd like to talk to you about, um, A, the effects of people taking their money out of banks. Um, because that's, again, that could cause a, you know, basically a, a small run on the bank and the capital comes out of the bank. So then it's harder to get loans and everything else. So let's talk about the effects of taking money out of the bank. And then also what you think they're doing with trying to get rid of the $100 bill and the $50 bill. They're telling us this is happening now over in Europe. They're telling us they don't want that because it will help solve crimes. Mm -hmm. I think that's bullcrap. Agree? Absolutely agree. Okay. Uh, so, so let's have you back next week and let's talk about those two things. Going to a cashless society and why that is so bad and the effects of taking money out of the bank and how we don't add to, to problems on that and what you should do with your money. Could we do that? Absolutely. Chris, thank you so much. Again, the, uh, Looking at the list here. My bank is number one. <laughs> We're number one. Yeah. We're, We're number, number one. one. We're, We're number one. one. Chris, before you, before you, is he still on? Before he hangs up, if you can put him back on. Chris, are you there still? <laughs> so still here, yeah. Okay. How likely do you think a crash much larger than 2008 is coming, let's say, in the next two years? I think it's very likely, and I think it starts in China or some place like Japan. Who knows? But it's a global it's a global mess right now, Glenn. Okay. So, Chris, let's have you on. I want to talk about what you think the next one looks like, because I think it looks like personally, but I'm not you, you know I'm not you, and I don't have all your background. I think it looks like a greater depression, and people don't understand that. Um, so, will you address that as well? Absolutely. Love Great. You. Chris, thank you very much. He'll be on with us next week. Hey. He yes. is the author of Prosper and the co-founder of PeakProsperity.com. Do that. Please do this. And look at, look at your bank because you might be surprised. Yeah, I know. Mine's only exposed at $67 trillion. Oh, that's it. <laughs> that's <laughs> it pretty good, that's right? It.